2020. Woohoo! I am back. I am fired up and I'm ready to rock and roll your purpose in 2020. Welcome back to Ascension Talk with Ariella. So if you didn't already have it in your diaries, please put this day in your diaries because you are going to be wanting to join me every week or as many times as we do this show in 2020 because I've got some incredibly crazy valuable content to share with you so ascension talk with ariella is aired live on facebook in my avatar ascension community on the first three thursdays of each month at 4 p.m uk and this is the first one of 2020 so i would like to officially welcome you and celebrate with you we are indeed in a, in a brand new, not only year, but in a brand new energy decade of our lives now. And um, I, I'm really excited about this next 10 years, really excited, because a lot has been prophesized about 2020 and beyond, particularly the years 2025, 2027. You know, this is, this is the time that I believe that we have all been waiting for. This is the time that we are all on this planet for. What happens in the next 10 years is going to radically change and shape the future for all of humankind. And from a multi-dimensional perspective, from a spiritual perspective, I know that we're in for some huge changes indeed. And I believe that by the end of this energy decade, multidimensionality will be on the map, much more on the map, and it will be much more recognized in society and ascension will be much more recognized in society. So I am making some big predictions for this next 10 years and um, part of which I believe there's gonna be a lot more collaboration. There's gonna be a lot more collaboration on the earth plane between different disciplines, science and spirituality, alternative doctors, traditional doctors. I believe that there will be more unification which is happening this decade. However, this month, hello to all of you who are watching. Hi Kaiser, lovely to have you here. So this month, I want you to, to mark it in your diaries. I'm gonna be coaching you. I am your appointed, I am appointing myself as your purpose, your sacred purpose coach, your sacred purpose mentor. And this month, I'm gonna be coaching you on how to connect with your higher purpose. Um, if you are not on my email, on my email list, I suggest that you do sign up to that because in, throughout the month of January, we're going to be sending you a lot of free content with tips and guidance on how to connect with your higher calling. Um, and then we send you like amazing stuff throughout the year, lots and lots of free stuff I always give away. Those of you who are on my list know that we are very generous in terms of what we give to our audience. So definitely make sure that you're on that email list. So how to connect with your higher purpose part one so first of all like why is it even important right to connect with your purpose and what has my i'm going to share a little bit about my experience what that has been in terms of connecting with my higher purpose well for myself and probably like a lot of us um I didn't know actually for many years. I mean, I did know, I did know, but I didn't know if you know what I mean. Like I, I, I was playing small, you know, I was playing small. I didn't realize that I was here on a mission. I had that in my heart, but I'd, I'd given up hope is the honest truth. I'd given up hope that there was such a thing as a purpose for me. And it was like life was just happening and I was kind of rolling through life or, you know, not, not understanding that I was the conscious creator of my reality, not understanding that I was the powerful creator of my destiny, right? And um, I worked in corporate for many, many years. A lot of you know that I worked um, as a high flyer in corporate for some, you know, big brands, some big blue chip companies. Uh, for 16 years, and I was a business manager. I was a um, I, I was a train procurement manager, and um, you know, very experienced in in my field. However, was it giving me that feeling of passion, of drive, of fulfillment in the morning? Not really. No. I mean, the the truth is is that I hadn't really felt that way about my corporate job for for quite a number of years. 
um, to begin with, it was quite interesting and, um, you know, quite exciting sort of learning new things. But the truth is that I was actually wanting to leave my job for about seven years before I actually took the leap of faith, bit the bullet, whatever you want to call it, um, and followed my heart and trusted in the way that my soul was calling me. So it was, you know, I was definitely um, there because it was like ticking the boxes and it was put, putting a roof over my head. You know, it was it was a decision. I was choosing to stay in a job that I my heart wasn't in because of fear of lack of money. That was that was the overriding thing. Like, what else do I do, right? And how do I pay this sizable roof that I've got over my head? Because at the time I was living in, in London, which very expensive city in the world. So, you know, again, like every day, you know, making that choice to stay. I mean, if if you're if you're in that situation now, or if you've been in a similar situation in the past where you've stayed in a job and your heart's telling you like get out but you're staying in it because you don't know what else to do or you've got fear of economic insecurity then put a thumbs up or a heart let me know if you've had a similar experience to me um, because that's what i did for years you know and there was there was some some things that i would you know, some days were better than others, right? And some moments were better than others. It wasn't all doom and gloom. There was still, you know, sometimes there was like, you know, a sense of achievement at the end of the day, or, you know, sometimes there was uh, an interesting day. But a lot of the time I knew that I was staying in a job out of fear rather than love. So if you stayed in a job out of fear rather than love, then put a thumbs up below. I can see some hearts coming through. So yes, you feel me. You've been you've been in a similar place. So it was when I was going through my um, my huge multi-dimensional activation, spiritual awakening, whatever we want to call it. Um, at age 36 that I found the, the courage um, to leave my job. And as I was going through that transition, you know, there was, there was a lot of stuff that was going on at that time, a lot of stuff that was going on at that time. For those of you who know my story, it got pretty um, supernatural. Um, there were a lot of psychic phenomenon happening and like very interesting paranormal like experiences that were happening to me, right? Um, which was interesting itself. But I tell you what, I, more than anything, I had just this overwhelming need. And it was like, it was so strong in me, such a powerful want to find out what my purpose was. It was like the, it was the overarching desire that I had. And it was, it was so overwhelming. And like with my spiritual beliefs now, it's like, I just know my soul was saying it is time to wake up. Like now is the time, you know, you can see through, and I was literally seeing through the veil, many things at that point, but it was like, you know, now is the time to, to make that leap of faith. Now is the time to get those questions answered. So I didn't really know where to start. And it's not exactly like it was the first time that I'd found myself wondering, what am I here to do? And previously, I hadn't been able to find any answers for that. And, you know, I'm pretty creative, like committed person, right? So if I set my mind to something, then I will, I will do it. If my heart's in it, I will do it. So I'd, I'd been on that search for quite a few years, but hadn't been able to really connect with what I truly wanted to do, what felt in alignment, which makes me laugh now because as an ascension guide, as an oracle, as a spiritual catalyst, as a spiritual business coach, I mean, it's not exactly like they teach you this stuff at school, right? It's not exactly like when they're sitting down with you to give you your options about sort of further education or what you might want to do as a future career opportunity. Oracle generally isn't on the list. Spiritual catalyst, none of these, these labels, indigo, you know, all of this stuff, not really on the list, right? So it was a surprise. And it was a it was a spiritual wake up call um, and it could only have been a spiritual wake up call which helped me to discover that so um i started asking those questions you know and i love there's a saying which is your the quality of your life will be determined by the quality of your question 
the quality of your life will be determined by the quality of your questions. And I love that. And it's so true. So I, I, I just like every day without sort of consciously, I didn't have the, the terminology for it back then, but every single day I was setting a clear intention to discover what my purpose was. And not only was I setting an intention, but I was taking action. So, you know, I was looking on Amazon, like I was buying books, how to discover what your purpose was. I was looking up on YouTube. Maybe somebody's re-watching this replay back on YouTube because you've done a, a search, what is my purpose? Maybe, and hopefully you found this video and I hope it helps you. You know, I was taking action. I was, I was researching, you know, I was, I was asking people around me as well. Like, how do you discover your purpose? And then because I was in such a, a flow of synchronicity at that time, it was through Facebook. And I tell you what, a lot of people slam Facebook and condemn Facebook. Um, but Facebook has given me some of my greatest connections ever, actually. And um, like, it's a very, very useful tool. Like Facebook at its best is incredible because I was looking on my, I was looking on my Facebook newsfeed and there was a post from a dear family member of mine. She is my step half auntie. Yes, I do come from one of those extended divorce families. And she put this post which was basically recommending that you book a reading, a psychic reading with a, a psychic friend of hers. And she was just going crazy about this woman. She was saying, you know, how amazing this reading was, how accurate it was, how much guidance she had received. So it was like, hmm, you know, I was just in that kind of magical space where I was open to going down the route of booking a psychic reading again, because, you know, being in corporate and like, you know, I, I just thought all of this stuff was a load of rubbish. I mean, I really did for many years. So it is such a surprise that I find myself being an oracle and teaching other oracles today. It is quite um, humorous indeed, I will say, quite the creation. Um, and anyway, I followed my heart, I followed my intuition, and I looked on the website of this lady who was being recommended, and she had these life purpose readings. And I thought, yeah, that is the one for me. They weren't cheap, and it was like, you know, I was sort of thinking, well, you know, a psychic reading, I probably only want to pay 10 or 15 pounds for that, right? I mean, it's like so interesting how we think about different um, different categories of people and how we put higher values on. So, so I had like the psychic services arena at a very low value, which is interesting because I definitely don't have myself at a low value in terms of the impact um, that I know that all of us in the spiritual community do create in people's lives today. And I had this reading and uh, it blew me away, gave me a lot of insight, a lot of guidance. And guess what? This person who read for me, she uses she used the same system as I'm teaching today, the Hebrew creation code system. So she was very much in my path, you know, to, to give me this reading and to introduce me to the system, you know, because it's a system which I've gone on to build my whole service mission on. And I fell in love with the system. I couldn't believe the accuracy of the of the information. So and that was it, you know, and and through her guidance and through who she helped me to see that I was, even though it was a huge stretch for me to believe that the person that she was describing in this reading could possibly be me because it, it happened with a, like a whole other string of events in my life at that point, which had opened me up to like there being this incredibly magical universe out there. It was enough with the help of my best friend at the time, my my twin flame, Ethan, like almost kind of shaking me and shouting at me, yes, you know, it is you who she's describing, it is you, like giving me that confirmation, which I really needed. You know, it was then that I was able to take the leap of faith. So it's very interesting when you think about purpose because it's always there. Like it, it really is always there. Like when I think back to my life, the clues were always there. I couldn't see them at the time, wasn't meant to see them possibly at the time, but it's so, 
it's it's very um, interesting when you look back in in hindsight to see how the dots connect themselves. Um, so here's top three things. So write these down or make a note of them. So these are three key areas that you want to look at for clues regarding your purpose. So the first one is you want to look at your pain points. OK, you definitely want to really examine the things in your past which have been your greatest challenges, the things which have confronted you the most that have created the most pain inside of you. Um, so for me, very much working with spirit in the spiritual arena that I do today, um, I had a, a huge pain point for me growing up was that I had um, a, a, a huge amount of fear about spirit because spirit had been all around me since I was a little girl. And I'd had many, many visitations, many messages, many psychic experiences, um, so much so that um, it troubled me from, a, from a, a mental health perspective for many years. I thought that I was very ill because I didn't have a framework to understand these psychic experiences through. And I was pretty much walking around like a, an open book and, you know, an open doorway with like everything, you know, huge empath, extremely, extremely sensitive, um, picking up energy that didn't belong to me wherever I went, energy and entities, entities with consciousness as well. And, um, you know, this was this, this was a huge, huge challenge for me. Um, as I say, I didn't I didn't understand what was happening at the time. I thought it was my imagination. I thought there was something very wrong with me. And um, like I knew that I was experiencing reality in, in quite a different way. I didn't realize that I was a natural channel. I didn't realize that I was psychic, that I was intuitive. You know, so all of this stuff you can see when I look back and I think, well, here I am today, you know, as an or like serving as an oracle, like given thousands of readings to other people, helping people in their evolutionary journey. Like people pay me, people hire me today for my sight, you know, for my insight. You know, that's one of the main reasons that people hire me. And it was my greatest curse growing up. There was just too much information to process. You know, I would I would be in a room and I'd just be reading everybody. And um, it was overwhelming to me. I was I was overwhelmed by energy. So um, look at your pain points in the past. You know, the things that have caused you the most challenges. This is a, a really, really fertile ground for you to study so that you can remember. And I believe that we all do know what our purpose is. We may have forgotten you know, when the veil of amnesia came down, we may have forgotten, but we all do know who we are. And it's a case of, of reminding ourselves these things. So number one is pain points. Number two is to look, and you could just, you could just write down some answers for this today. And in fact, I recommend that you do that. Um, and even if you joined me for my five day crack your creation code challenge back in November, we did that. Um, there will be so much insights being downloaded to you, particularly at this time, right, as you've gone through the Christmas holiday season where you're, you know, we, we have a little bit more space, some of us over this season, or at least we're not always at work over this season. And our soul is speaking to us all the time. So what are those insights that you've had over the, the holiday season? And particularly at the moment, I mean, hello, we are going, we are in a huge, huge, powerful passageway of time at the moment. Tomorrow's full, full moon eclipse is the second eclipse that we're having. You know, we've got this very rare planetary conjunction happening in Capricorn at the moment with all of these different um, planets, five different planets coming together in Capricorn. So, you know, soul is speaking to us very, very clearly. And our job is to listen. So, Question number two, write this down, is to look at what you feel passionately about. You know, what are the areas that you feel most passionately about? 
you know, is there a message that you want to share with society? You know, if you were stood in front of a large audience, for example, and you were given a microphone and that's it, you've got a strong message to share, what would that message be? It doesn't have to be a spoken message. It could just be, um, it could be something creative, right? And um, I am very pleased to share with you that as part of my New Year intentions today, I actually went to a pottery class. I mean, I'm very, very impressed with that. On a Thursday during the day, I've actually gone to a pottery class. I've, I signed, I've signed up for a six week pottery class as part of my intentions to get a bit more like get away from my laptop and do something that's that's creative, grounding with the pottery. It was fantastic. I absolutely loved it. Um, and I used to feel passionately about these types of things when I was younger, and I haven't done them for quite a long time. So, you know, what what do you do at the moment that you feel passionately about that you would like to do more of? Or what did you used to do when you were younger that you haven't done for a long time that you used to feel passionately about? You know, following our bliss, following our creativity is such a way to quickly align with our higher purpose. Our higher purpose always feels amazing. Like it doesn't feel like when I, you know, the work that I do today, the teaching that I do today, and I always knew that I was a teacher. I always knew that I was a teacher when I was a little girl, but I didn't know what I was a teacher of. You know, it doesn't feel like, like I just don't have those times anymore that I used to when I was in corporate where I would wake up and dread going to work. You know, it, it, it energizes me. The work that I do today, it gives back to me. It energizes me. You know, it's like fascinating. I love like serving my community, connecting with my community, the, you know, like all of it. So what do you feel passionate about is number two. Number three is to look at what are your natural talents? Yeah, what have always been your natural talents? So this could be, maybe you have, and we have one, um, we have a, a lady who works in my business. Some of you may know her, Sarah, who is amazing. She does all of my copywriting. We call her um, my divine scribe. She's, uh, <laughs> she's amazing. She loves writing. Yeah, and she's she's just always it's been her natural talent. She's an amazing writer. And so it could be writing, it could be drawing, it could be painting, it could be communicating as a natural talent. It could be that you are somebody who just really like has a loving acceptance towards others. That would be a natural talent. And of course, the the place to really look at and understand in more detail what your talents are is your soul blueprint yeah so you know you guys know that i um i work with this incredible hebrew system that decodes your name into hebrew phonetic sounds and then it puts it around a star of david and there are 22 hebrew fire letters which i call creation codes and they all mean different qualities different um yeah, there's different aspects attached to each of them. So that system definitely gives you a lot of illumination about who you are. And I do recommend that at the start of the year that you reread that. Like I recommend that you you have that as something um, to do this week before the end of the week to get out your soul blueprint and to look it up in my ebook. I think most of you should have that. If you don't have it, then go to my website and you can download it on there for a really affordable price. And there's a 90 page ebook, which is going to tell you a lot about yourself. Um, so looking at your natural talents, what do you feel passionately about and looking at your past pain points? Those are all like really, really fertile places to look. So this is part one. I'm going to be with you next week as well. And I will be sharing part two of how to connect with your purpose. I'm just going to be giving you tips this month and coaching you into how to align with your purpose in 2020. So I can see there's, um, there's quite a few of you watching, which is great going into the comments now. So let me know what insights have been coming up for you as you've been listening to me share. 
Right? As you go back and you think about pain points or what you feel passionately about or what your natural talents are, just put some comments for me so that I know what is landing with you. And it will help you to bring through some more insights, like to declutter, to create space by typing it into the comments as well. Robin is here. Hi, Robin. That's exactly how I feel about my work. And I've been a teacher in some capacity my whole life also, just not knowing how it would play out today. Yes. Yeah. You always know that you are, you know, you're in the right swim lane, you're in alignment when you have that feeling of, you know, of it, of your work being your passion. So that's great to hear, Robin. I'm pleased that, um, that you also feel that you are in the right swim lane. Um, yeah, I always knew that I was a teacher. Always knew that I was a teacher. Um, I've shared this before, but um, in case you haven't heard it, I used to, <laughs> when I was younger, probably, how old would I have been? Maybe sort of 11, 12, this type of age. Um, you know, the, the only sort of private space that I had was in the, if I locked myself in the bathroom at home. So I used to lock myself in the bathroom, I'd sit on the toilet, and I would teach to this imaginary class in front of me, you know, this imaginary class of students, and I would have sort of my books there, and I would be turning around the books to like show them the pictures. And then I would be there with, I'd be there marking their homework assignment, you know, with my red pen. <laughs> And putting the comments, I hope I was nicer to my students than than my teachers. Well, well, I'll, I'll reframe that. I wasn't the best student. I have to, I have to admit that I wanted to be a teacher, but I didn't want to be a student. So, um, but yeah, the the teacher was always wanting to come through. But of course, like I couldn't understand it when I got older because I was like, well, the the last place I want to go back into is a school, right? Now I finally left school. I don't want to go back into a school as a teacher or any other capacity. So I couldn't understand this teaching aspect. And but now I do, right? But I always we always know, you know, we always know who we are. It's illusion that we don't. Alyssa's here. Hi, Alyssa Ashley. I can relate. Almost 15 years, no soul drive. Yes, I think you are in corporate as well, aren't you, Alyssa? So yeah, it's time to shift into what your soul truly has in store for you. And, um, you know, to look forward to a much more exciting, passion-filled future and um, I know that you're in my four month creation code initiate program. So we're going to help you to do just that and to discover while you're here. Um, you will also still like me, you will need to take that leap of faith at some point. Right. And we'll help you to to be able to take that in a way that um, doesn't scare you to death. But um you know, we, we still need to take to create space. Like if we're holding on to something so tightly that it's taking up all of the space, then we can't expect anything else to fill it. Um, but there is there are smart ways of doing it. And the smart way, and one of the smart ways you've already done because you're in my Creation Code Initiate program, I believe that you've also signed up for the longer journey as well, which is great. So I'm going to help you to birth your quantum business and get your talents operating for you in a way in the world that actually serves you, serves others and helps to create abundance. So yeah, this, this is great. Alicia, actually, I need a shock push. Okay. Noted. You've come to the right place. <laughs> Cool. Okay. And you'll also probably create one for yourself. I mean, that's the thing. We do create these shock pushes for ourselves if we're not listening. I did in the end. I mean, it was pretty shocking what I created for myself in the physical and in the spiritual world as a catalyst to finally get me to trust and to um, transition out of corporate. But we don't have to do it in the chaotic way. And it's good you're not because you are signed up to um, courses which are there to support you with that. Okay, so that's all I have for you this week. Part one, I will be with you next Thursday. Part two, 
of connecting with your with your purpose. I'll also check that later on the comments, but I hope today's episode of Ascension Talk with Ariella has served you and supported you. I wish you all the absolute best and huge love in 2020 with whatever you are intending to create. And just remember, like you are the powerful creator of your reality. You know, you can choose whatever it is that you're wanting to. It's all about heart's desire now. You know, we can create from a place of heart's desire, but you've got to listen to your guidance and you've got to be prepared to follow it as well, all the way to the end, past the initiations, past the challenges, past the illusions. You know, that truly is the way to soul freedom. And I'm here to help you with that. So let's stay connected. Let's stay close and let's co-create 2020 being the best years of our lives. Much love and see you next week. 